So we just rotated around the x-axis, so naturally we want to rotate one about the y-axis. So that tells us that this is our axis of rotation which will make things a little bit different for us because we're not so comfortable with dealing with an axis of rotation of y. So we're going to take the region bounded by g of y, which is y minus y squared, which is this lovely curve right here, and we're going to rotate it around the y-axis. And to notate that y-axis rotation, I will of course put my arrow right up here on the y-axis. Okay, so I've got my axis of rotation noted, lovely. I've got my region. I want to um, sketch, I'm not going to sketch a representative disk, sorry, but I'm going to sketch a region. I'm going to um, identify a representative rectangle. So I've got my region, check, right, that's already done. So that's part A right here, done, rotated, lovely. I'm going to identify um, the rectangle, oh, sorry, that's a rectangle. I'll fix those typos for future. So we want to show a rectangle, and then we want to show it rotate, um, labeled and then rotated. So let's see here. So I'm going to have a rectangle like this. Okay. It has a thickness that's dy. Because we're rotating around the y-axis, then the thickness will be dy because it has to be perpendicular to that y-axis for the disk method. Now the radius of that disk, I mean the the length of that rectangle is the radius of the disk, the radius of rotation, which is equal to g of y, which is y minus y squared. Lovely. Okay, so I've got my radius labeled. Right, there's my radius of rotation. I have my thickness labeled, dy. Wonderful. I do need my boundaries. So my boundaries are going to be from down here to up here. So I can tell from Desmos that my boundaries are 0 and 1. And again, if you want to find your boundaries analytically, which was not required, but if you want to, Um, and again, it would be required, say, um, for something that doesn't work out as nicely as this does. You would want to set g of y, which is y minus y squared, equal to 0 because the y-axis is when x equals 0. Because this is x equals g of y. So then that would be y, 1 minus y is equal to 0, which means either y equals 0 or 1 minus y equals 0, which means y equals 1. The algebra rule of um, that we learn, which is the multiplication rule with zero, right? Product rule, zero product rule, whatever. So two things multiplied to make zero, either one of them is zero. So either y is zero or y is one, which lo and behold, we found with Desmos as well. So there they are. Okay. And again, you're not doing that necessarily for this problem. You're doing it for future problems that you might have where it might not be so obvious what they are and you want to be able to find them analytically. Okay. So C the volume would be pi c to d uh, r of y squared dy. I did it without even looking because it's pi r squared times the thickness. And c is right here. This is c. c is 0. d is 1. Oops, sorry. There's your start. There's your end. Okay, so that would be the integral from, well, and I'm just going to put pi out in front, 0 to 1, and r of y is g of y, which is y minus y squared. So that's y minus y squared. I'm going to square that and multiply it by the thickness that is dy. Sorry, I forgot. there we go. All right. Well, that's fine. So again, I hope you enjoyed the color because I'm not going to use it anymore for this problem. So this is pi times the integral from zero to one. I'm going to need to foil this out. So it's y squared minus two y cubed because y squared times y is y cubed and there's two of them plus y to the fourth dy which is pi times 
one third y cubed minus one half y to the fourth plus one fifth y to the fifth from zero to one. On half, of course, because two divided by four, because when you add one to that power, it'll be four. Two divided by four is a half. So that would be pi one third minus a half plus a fifth, all minus zero, because we don't care about the back half because it's a polynomial. And then we would go find this with Desmos. There, I have it already drawn for you. It's available on the Desmos graphs page. And you can see that I have A and B already set for, that's for the um, position of the rectangle, just so you can see the rectangle. And then I believe I have it so that you can rotate them. But nevertheless, the integral calculation is right here. And you can see, well, that's kind of terrible because it involves the pi, so it's never going to give you a really great answer in terms of exact answers. So if you remove the pi, you can make it a fraction and then know that it's 1 over 30. So it's 1 over 30 without the pi, so it must be pi over 30. And just a reminder that that rectangle that you're drawing, you can kind of draw it anywhere. I mean, I wouldn't recommend at the top or the bottom just because it would be so small. But it's technically stacking up a whole bunch of them. And then you have to imagine each of these rectangles rotates around and forms a disk. And then you stack those disks up to form this object. And the volume of that object would be pi over 30. And then what were the units here? Feet. So this would be feet cubed, which is about 0.1047 feet cubed. 